what we're going to do in this video is set up a 10 by 10 grid right and the reason we're going to set up this 10 by 10 grid is we're going to learn our multiplication table the 10 by 10 multiplication table and uh, since we're going to have a table we're also going to learn um, sort of a math puzzle game pattern recognition game um, that we can have fun with right uh, that we can use and uh, you know sort of chill with and sort of exercise for the mind right playing around with uh, numbers and patterns and movement types okay so we need to set up a 10 by 10 grid now the method that I'm going to use to set up this grid is a method that I used for about a decade doing geophysics in the 90s right it was a before I started teaching mathematics um, I was a geophysicist, environmental geophysicist specifically, and I worked uh, in the field um, basically throughout the 90s for, for a decade or so, and I flew around all over Canada and all over the United States, and, you know, it was an amazing job, you know, it was fantastic. Half the time I was out in the field working with high-tech equipment and, you know, sometimes getting dropped off by helicopters or going out to the wilderness and, uh, you know, being around bears and wildlife and the other half I was back at the office processing data and writing reports so best of both worlds outside and inside right dealing with technology and what I used to do whenever I went up to the field one of the things you end up doing in geophysics in in data collecting in the real world is you need to set up a grid because when you collect data you need to know where that data came from right and if you're collecting a lot of data what happens is you need to have a spatial you know coordinates associated with that data so you can place that data in the proper location that way you can take that data and run software basically uh, contour it right with process it basically using different different techniques uh, that we have right a uh, lot of computer power and what you do is you create maps and take a look at those maps and see if any anomalies stand out right or you get more detail of what's in the ground and for those of you that don't know geophysics is basically um, a, a field where you use instruments to find out what's going on um, inside the earth right what's going on under the surface of the earth that's what i was involved in anyway right uh, specifically in the environmental field okay so that's what we're going to do what you're about to learn is not just you know a trick or some exercise that we're doing to set up a grid to learn our multiplication table this is something that I used to do and almost every geophysicist uh, does this or has done this or, and definitely knows how to do this right because it's something that I use for a whole decade right every time i went up to the field i was basically setting up a grid and this is a technique that i used to use okay now what we need first of all is a baseline so what we're going to do is um we're going to set up our grid here the 10 by 10 grid here right and what i need to do is create a horizontal line that's going to be my baseline and i'm going to have you know a zero zero point right and this is really connects up to the Cartesian coordinate system that we talked about in, I guess, series one of the language of mathematics, right? Super important uh, to understand how the Cartesian coordinate system works, right? So we're gonna set up a baseline here, right? And I'm gonna try to make it horizontal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come off the ceiling here, the same distance, right? And I need need to be able to put 10 uh, numbers right I need 10 columns here so what I'm going to do I'm going to use my tape measure and I'm going to use let me show it to you and I'm going to use 10 centimeters right as the width of one column right so if I need 10 columns that means I'm going to go out one meter right and I'm going to come down from the ceiling down a certain length I think I'm just going to put it up here because I do need a little bit of space up top where I can put the numbers 1 to 10 because those are the columns. Those are the 
titles for the columns and we're going to have rows here going down one to ten so we're going to do our multiplication table right so i'm going to measure a distance here and i already sort of framed it right so i could you know make sure it fits in in the picture that you see right so i'm going to come down 22 centimeters okay and i'm going to go across that way i know exactly it's going to be horizontal okay. and i'm going to assume the ceiling is uh it is horizontal so it'll be level with uh, with the floor okay now i need i need the length of that line to be one meter right so i'm going to come from here I'm going to go to here. Go to here. Okay. Perfect. So the way I'm going to set up my grid is uh, i'm not going to draw on it because you know i don't want it to be permanently put on there but i'm going to use green tape right painter's tape and i need to find the seam on it here's the seam right so i'm going to go across horizontally because i put my ticks on there one meter actually i'm going to bring my exacto knife as well that way i make clean cuts right so we're gonna go one meter. that's a nice horizontal line that it looks that way right so what I need to do now is I need to come down perpendicular from this right because I want my grid to be perpendicular like a nice square right 10 by 10 square so I need the angle here to be 90 degrees okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a special triangle let me show you how this works Okay, so I got a piece of board here, okay, and I'm going to show you how this, this plays out. So in the field, what we end up doing in geophysics is we find usually, you know, if we're not going against a building or a fence or we don't have some kind of marker set up, we go out to the field, an open field, and we decide that we want to collect data in a certain area, right? So what we end up doing, we pick a zero, zero point, like Cartesian coordinate, zero, zero point, right? And then let's say we wanted to collect data across here, right? So what we end up doing is we end up creating a line this way, right? So let's say we go out this much, right? Let's assume the distance, oops, the distance here we've traveled that's our zero zero point that's our zero zero point or not that's a zero zero but that's our zero zero right zero zero right and what we end up doing is we end up creating a right angle triangle let's see if i can draw a right angle triangle approximately I don't know. okay so we use a special triangle called a pythagorean triple and the one that i usually ended up using was a 40 meter one a 30 meter one and if you do this go across this becomes 50. so it's a pythagorean triple 
triangle, special triangle, where this is guaranteed to be 90 degrees. So it's a triangle, right angle triangle, where their legs are three, four, and five, right? And there are other types of triangles like this. There's a um, um, 5, 12, 13 one, right? And there's, I think there's an infinite number of these. There must be an infinite number of these. Well, there is definitely an infinite number of these because you can generate multiples of these right so it doesn't necessarily have to be three four five it could be six eight ten right it could be 30 40 50 right it doesn't necessarily have to be 5 12 13 it could be multiples of that right and there are other ones as well but this is the one that i usually ended up using so what we ended up doing is doing this we would create a 90 degree angle and depending on how far we want it to go all you would do is put stakes here right and then you would line yourself with the stakes and continue measuring this way and put stakes down i'm going to show you um actually let me show you how that works right so as long as you you appreciate how we're going to do this what we're going to do here let me show you how this is going to work first okay so what we're going to do we call that our zero zero point so i'm going to go 40 centimeters this way right and if i go 30 centimeters this way and from the 40 centimeter mark because i have my horizontal line right this is my baseline everything goes off this so 40 centimeters this way if i go 50 this way and 30 this way wherever i end up that's guaranteed for this to be 90 degrees and from there i can just measure down right i could do another one with 80 and 60 and 100 right that gives me one two three points i can connect those up right and then that way i can go down a whole meter and once i get this point i can go across a meter this way and a meter this way and wherever i end up that's a right um what do you call it that's a box that's a square right with everything being right angles okay so let's let's do that right now and then i'll show you how lining up the stuff works okay so the way we're going to do this is i have some uh, some rope here and this is i don't know what the name of this rope is but it's uh, it's fantastic rope it comes in super handy tying down things in the car especially but uh, i ended up using this type of rope for a lot of things right and i don't have um you know in the field geophysics we use stakes and hammer right we take stakes wooden stakes and we paint the the top of it fluorescent you know orange or red usually orange because it stands out right so we would take a stake if we we're in the field and put it right at zero zero and then put stakes along here lining ourselves up like this right and i'll show you how that works on the board after we set up our 90 degree um a triangle right so what I'm going to do is use these gigantic tacks that I found, right, as my stakes. So we need to put a stake in at the top here. And I need my rope. And my rope is sort of rep replacing my tape measure in the field. In the field, we used to take tape measures that were um, 50 meters long and 100 meters long. And I believe we had 200 meter tape measures. Uh, because we used to do huge grids uh, very large grids and um, we actually didn't use nylon tape measures we used metal tape measures because well we did use nylon as well nylon as well but when we wanted things to be very accurate uh, we used metal because when you pull cloth or nylon tape measures uh, what happens is they stretch and over long distances your grid ends up being off by a few centimeters and if you continue that for a while you're off by a lot because for example if we take this rope if i pull it it stretches right even a minute stretch over long distances throws your measurements off so we used to use metal tape measures where they really didn't stretch very much right or very little so our distances over long distance were fairly accurate okay so i'm gonna take this and i'm gonna lay this down here at my zero zero point okay 
Now, let me just roll this out. I need this to be a meter. So I need my exacto knife. Really? I'm gonna cut this a little bit past the meter. I'm not gonna pull too hard so it doesn't stretch, but I'm gonna pull hard enough so it's taut or fairly tight. So I'm gonna cut it here. Okay. Now what I need to do is I need to mark off the 10 centimeter marks on the on the rope on the grid right so i'm just going to take my tent pen and my line here i'm just going to go off this way because i put the stake there for now and i'm going to mark off oops 10 centimeters So we have our 10 centimeter laid out, right? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the marks on my rope. So we're going to come here. This guy is going to be 100. do is create another one of these uh, one of these strings because I have I'm gonna have one coming down 30 centimeters here and I'm gonna have one coming down from gonna go across 40 and from the 40 going 50 this way right so I need two of these strings so I'm gonna take this guy down and I'm gonna put this where 40 centimeters is one so 10 20 30 40 and i'm going to go approximately in the center of the tape and i'm going to go take another tack right i'm going to tie my rope to it my measuring tape i guess again at approximately a little bit more than a meter We're going to 
take our uh, Sharpie and mark this up again, right? So we're gonna take this and let's go. This one is gonna be hard to do here. See the stakes here right we have basically one at here and one at here so i'm going to go down 30 centimeters this way vertically and that 150 and where that ends up that should be a 90 degrees right it should this line it was going to be perpendicular to this line now what i'm going to do to make sure uh, this is as accurate as possible i'm also going to go to 80 right and I'm gonna go down 60 and I do the same thing. And that way my three points should be in a straight line. If they're not, I know there's a problem, right? But hopefully they will be, right? So if they're in a straight line and then that way, all I gotta do is just go down and put little ticks every 10 centimeters, right? Because I got a perpendicular line. So I'm gonna mark it up with a pencil. Let's see. So we're gonna go 30. So 10, 20, 30 is here. And 50, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that mark should be right here. Mark it, I'll put a little dot. Uh, it looks like a 90 degrees, I'm not sure. We'll have to test it out, right? So we're gonna go down to 80 here right now. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. So let's go in the middle. Okay. We go in the middle. So what we've got? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 100 okay so i'm gonna go to 100 and i'm gonna go to 60 so 10 20 30 40 50 60 and 100 and this line here is going through this tick so i'm pretty sure these two lines are going to be perpendicular right so let's go it's right there so i'm gonna put a little tick right there okay hope so and what we're gonna do we're gonna come down to one meter and i have one one meter marked here so one meter is going to be right there. Okay. Well, let's see if this, uh, this works, right? So we're going to take our stake out because we don't need it anymore. We're going to bring our, uh, our green tape back and pull this off. We're gonna go from here. We're gonna go all the way to let's see from here. We're gonna go all the way to here. A 
that looks like a fairly square uh, square grid that looks like a 90 degree angle right so now all I need to do is take this stake right put it down here go out one meter this way take this other stake up here put it at the one meter mark come down here right hopefully they'll meet here and that'll be my uh, square grid right so let's do this and hopefully it all works out i'm gonna grab my pencil and make sure i can put the mark in now this guy's gonna go straight there plaster walls this guy's gonna come here and these guys are gonna meet right about here Now I'm not going to pull too tight because I don't want the tape to be stretching very much, right? And I'm going to put little ticks here that way. I have markers along the way. Approximately anyway. up working right. so I'm gonna bring this guy out first let's take this guy down I'm gonna go in the middle of this so I'm gonna come straight down to this going to do is uh, take this guy down right and we're going to go from here all the way across to here that's my uh, square right now all I have to do is put my vertical lines my columns and put my rows in right so all I need to do is really take my tape measure right and put it at the holes and mark off the distances like this And what I'm doing is going right in the middle of the width of this thing, right? Approximately, anyway. Again, if this, if this thing was on the field, on the ground, it becomes easier than doing it on a wall. You become more accurate because you can lay the tape down and line yourself up. Okay. And that guy's there, that's fine. I need this guy. Where is that? There it is. So we're going to put the 10 centimeter marks here. Oh, my. 
is there. And we need one more across down here, right? So now we're officially done with these guys with the big tags until I show you how we do the lineup stuff, right? So all I have to do now is uh, bring my green tape and go across, right? So let's do this. I'll put the verticals in first and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make these a little bit longer up top, right? Because we do want the column markers sort of to lay out the headers, right? One, two, three, all the way across. Come down. It's right there. Let's do this one. And for geophysics, uh, just so you have an idea of what we used to do, we used to set up our zero, zero grid here and then start collecting data going this way. And we, it's basically a Cartesian coordinate system. And then we'd go across and collect data going this way and then collect data coming back and then collect data. So we would just cover a whole area with an instrument collecting data, such as electromagnetics or magnetic methods. And what we would do is uh, take that data into different types of programs and uh, grid them, basically extrapolate, you know, data between the points. If we wanted to, if we didn't, you know, if the data wasn't um, sampled extensively, or if we sample it extensively, if we had a lot of data points, then we didn't have to do any uh, extrapolation. And then we would grid it, we would contour it, we put a color bar on there, and we just look for anomalies, right? Or patterns, if we're looking for patterns. So those are all our uh, vertical lines, right? Looks very like, fairly accurate, right? Nice square. Now we've got to put in the horizontal lines, right? So I'm just going to come this way. And I'm going to extend it a little on this side. Oops. beauty with green tape. 
so easy to work with. It's not permanent tape, but it's uh, really easy to work with doing this type of stuff. Does it look good? It's actually sags a little in the middle there. Eh? Oh. Got one more horizontal line to put in. Now, one thing I did promise uh, to show you was uh, how we actually, because when we did geophysics. Um, is or when you do geophysics is you basically put stakes here and you're not going you know just a meter you're not going just 50 meters sometimes you're going for a couple of kilometers when you're doing work like this or even longer right so you don't have tape measures that go that long you wouldn't want tape measures that go that long right to be huge heavy to carry right so what you end up doing is you put stakes down let's bring out our um, our thing again and work with it. Here we go. Let's take 
this. So let's bring out our two tacks or two stakes that we're working with, right? These guys. So let's assume our tape measure was only 40 meters long, right? So, but we want it to go all the way across, right? So what we would do is we would put a stake at the zero, zero point. We would put a stake at, this would be, I guess, 40, zero, if you're doing a Cartesian coordinate system, right? And what you would do is make sure that these things were vertical, right? They weren't tilting one way or another. And we would have painted the top of these guys so they stood out. And then what we would do is we would attach our tape measure here and go out. And what we would do is line up the stake, another stake. Let's grab another stake. Let's grab a white one. Okay. So we would take our tape measure, right? Along here, we would go out as far as we want to go or as far as the tape measure takes us. And what we would do is we would line this guy up with these guys, right? I'm not sure if this is being lined up or not, if you can see it. So you usually close one eye, right? And you would line it up. Let's do it this way, probably better. So I'm taking a tape. I would have attached the tape measure to this, right? To the, the second one. I would walk out, walk out, walk out, walk out, walk out. And I would say, okay, I need, you know, as far as my tape measure goes. And this stake is not fully straight, so I'm going to straighten out a little bit, right? Perfect. So I would come out, right, from here. I would come out, 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 come out. And I would try to line this guy up with these guys. And that gives me a fairly accurate line. If you want, you can see it. If you you're offline, the three points don't line up, right? If you're here, you're all exaggerated. You obviously, you're not in line with those two points, the two stakes, right? So you would have to come back, come back, come back, come back. And that looks like it's almost in line. That looks like it's in line. And I would put the stake down, right? Let's see. Looks fairly accurate. And then if you want to go further, you know, you grab another stake and line up, line up, line up, line up. And you would go further and further and further, right? And if you look at this thing, you know, is it a straight line? Looks fairly straight, right? Not bad. Now, for me, laying out grids like this, I've gone or I had gone to sites in the 90s you know if we were mapping water contamination around brine ponds or mapping you know trying to map leach uh, uh, contaminants being leached out of landfills going to water cont water table around landfills or whatever it might be I would set up grids like this going like maybe my zero zero point would be somewhere here and I would go the biggest one I did in this using this method was about two kilometers in one direction and then go up another kilometer and then come back down and I had to go around brine pits right so I had to set up a really fairly accurate grid 90 degrees right so two kilometers one kilometer doing a couple of you know zigzags around and having to come back to my zero zero point and when, they, when you get to the end, you realize how accurate you are. And when I got to the zero, zero point, just using tape measure and stakes and line of sight, setting up the initial grid using two people and the rest of it, one person, right? I would get to the last point and I was maybe three meters off. And this wasn't for mapping, you know, trying to find uh, drums, metal, in the ground because for that stuff you have to be more accurate this was mapping out large areas 
we are looking for contaminants leaching into the ground so going two kilometers and one kilometer and coming back and only being three meters off is extremely accurate right so this isn't just a system that we use to set up grids as an exercise this is a system that's used to set up grids all over the world not just for geophysics but other systems as well other disciplines as well okay very powerful very powerful indeed so what we're going to do in um, the next video is learn our multiplication table right we're going to put numbers here one all the way to ten and one all the way to ten this way right and then we're going to go down rows and up columns and find out what this number times a certain number is here and the way it's going to work is we're going to do the bottom part of this first because the bottom of the part of this flips over to the top part because there's an axis of symmetry diagonally here and you'll see how that works and the reason it works is because basically two times three is the same as three times two it doesn't make a difference which order you multiply numbers in, right so we're going to do our learn our multiplication table in the next video and the video following that we you know since we have a grid set up what we're going to do is we're going to learn a math puzzle game that a student showed me a few years ago that i really like and i got sort of addicted to for a few months i was playing it a lot so i'm going to show you how that game works uh, and it's a fun little game it you know calms you down it's, it's it's very chill and it really really doesn't require calculations mathematics too much uh, but it does you know hit on one aspect of mathematics which is pattern recognition so the game is really a pattern recognition game okay and um, and that's it i hope you enjoy it uh, i hope uh, uh, you find this useful at some point in your life okay and remember multiplication table learn it super 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 important okay i'll see you guys in the next video bye for now